Christmas celebration. It's good to be home. If you've been watching online, thank you for tuning in with us. This is Celebration Church. We're happy to be here. Let's worship the Lord with everything we have this morning. Come on.
to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands
and dominions, oh powers and positions, your name stands above the world.
raise both hands up into the Lord. Lift your chin to your Father. Do the best you can to visualize His face. I'm just going to speak a blessing into your life. In the name of Jesus, I speak happiness. Genuine happiness. You should be able to live your life with happiness, and I speak happiness into you. I speak peace into you. Peace in every single storm that you may find yourself in, I speak peace. Peace that passes understanding, I speak sweet sleep into your life. In the name of Jesus, every worry, every concern you have is floating away. It's drifting away like the wind blowing a leaf down the street. I speak in Jesus' name that every battle would begin to shift, that your imagination would be arrested by the Holy Spirit. I speak in Jesus' name that the crooked places in your life would be made straight and the rough places would be made smooth. The angels that are in your house, I speak in Jesus' name that they would take authority over every evil spirit and they will cast them wherever the Lord tells them to go. In Jesus' name, I speak victory. I speak a fresh anointing. I speak blessings into your life. If you receive that, would you give them a standing ovation? Come on. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now let's say thank you to our worship team. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Turn around, find four or five people, and just say, I'm so glad you are here. So glad that you are here. Well, I tell you what, um, I am happy I'm here, uh, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Como están? Bien, bien. Oh, it's good to see you. Los, los amo a todos. I'm trying. Uh, estudio Espanol, pero es más despacio. <laughs> um, if you're visiting here, I'm happy that you're here. This is what I'd like for everybody to do. Grab a, a cell, you grab your cell phone and open up your notes, your notes app. And if somebody next to you is not grabbing their cell phone, look at them and say, you're not that cool. Grab your cell phone. <laughs> open up your notes app. Do Androids have notes? Yes. I mean, I know they look cool, but I don't know. Do they have notes? Anyway, open up your notes app, and um, this, I just want you to just keep it there just for a second. I'll tell you why I'm asking you to do that in a minute. Um, every single one of you, you love the Lord, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Or you love the person that dragged you here, and you couldn't say no. But you love the Lord. Deep down inside, you love the Lord. And, and not only do you want to worship Him, but you want to serve Him. And I just want you to know that there is nothing you can do for the Lord. You can give a million dollars in the offering. You can go on 79,000 different missions trip. There's nothing you can do for the Lord more important than telling your own friends, your own family, who you worship and where you worship. If you go on 79 mission trips, think about what you're doing. You're getting in a plane and you're flying over your friends and family to go find somebody you don't know. Now, I'm telling you, my life has changed on mission trips. I don't know why I'm using mission trips. My life has changed on mission trips, but it is subordinate to your friends and family. And so, the reason why I asked you to open up the notes section in your phone is. I am going to pray right now that the Holy Spirit would bring to mind someone that you need to invite to church 
for this coming Sunday. Sometimes we punt it. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I will do it. I know I need to do it. I will do it. But I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit would bring someone to your mind that you are going to ask this Sunday. And so I'm going to pray for you. Don't you pray. But if anyone comes to your mind, I just want you to put their name in your notes section of your phone. Holy Spirit, right now, I know that you want to partner with every person in this room. Would you bring to their mind right now someone that they need to invite? And I rebuke all fear. I rebuke all anxiety that keeps them from inviting the person that they're most scared to invite. In Jesus' name, amen. If you haven't already written their name, I'm going to give you about 10 seconds just to Wow, you set yourself an alarm. <laughs> In fact, that's probably a good idea. Set yourself for an alarm for two o'clock, and then you can leave and you're like, "Church was so awesome today. Will you please come next Sunday?" That's a good idea. Uh, I want to show you a quick testimony. It's about 60 seconds long about somebody who invited somebody to the church. Take a look at this. Hi, my name is Tina, and I hadn't attended church in many, many years, and my life was a mess. And so one night I just yelled out to God in desperation. And about two weeks later, I met this really great guy, and um, he invited me to come to celebration with him, and so I did, and my life has not been the same since. Um, I have experienced uh, mental and physical healings. Um, I've made some pretty awesome friendships, and me and that guy got married, and um, I found my forever church family. So um, just extend an invitation out to someone um, to come to celebration and let's see what God can do in their lives. So Scott, thank you so much for my invitation to celebration. So if you're a single lady in this room, go find, Go find some good-looking guy, invite him to church, and let's just see what happens. <laughs> Gentlemen, just, just, hey, if it can happen once, it can happen twice. Go find some pretty girl and be like, I really feel <laughs> like I'm supposed to invite you to church. I'm being a little cheeky. But uh, if you're visiting with us, I'm going to ask you, give us one year of your life. Give us one year. I promise you, you'll never again be the same. Uh, we want to give every single first-time guest in this room, if you're 18 years or older, uh, a visit a Visa card for $15 this morning. You can go to lunch on us. It's just our way of saying, hey, we knew that um, you didn't know us, and you came anyway. And it's just our tangible way of saying, thank you for giving us a shot. And uh, I want to give this Visa card, young man in the hoodie with the glasses on, why don't you come on over here? I don't know if it's your first time, second time, zero, uh, 150th time, but uh, I'd like to give this to you. What's your name? Evangela. Evangela? That's an awesome name. That's an awesome name. How many times have you been here? Uh, many, but I brought my friend for the first time. Oh, well, give it to her. You brought her for the first time? Are you married? No. <laughs> You're welcome. You are welcome. It's going to be the best $15 you've ever given anybody. You are welcome. All right, well, we're going to transition into a time of tithes and offerings. I don't know if we can beat that in the rest of the service, but 
Um, we're going to transition into a time of tithes and offerings, but this is just for our church family. If you call celebration your home, this is when we follow biblical principles in the area of our finances. This isn't a principle or a request that I make that would be far too awkward. Uh, but my job is to present the biblical principles, and, and then it's your decision on whether or not you want to follow them. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 26, it says this, that the Lord will be your confidence. You're not your own confidence. You don't put your chips on you, on your personality, your strategy, your job. No, 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 no. It says that the Lord will be your confidence. It's, it's you saying, look, I'm putting all chips on you. If this boat sinks, then let it sink with me trusting you. I'm putting all my hope in you. The Lord will be your confidence, and he will keep your foot from being caught. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, do inventory of every person in this room. Every single person in this room needs a miracle. I pray that you would exceed their expectations and bless them in Jesus' name. Everybody, if you receive that, say amen. amen. Come on, let me hear you. Amen. amen. If you talk back to me while I'm speaking, my sermon will get shorter and shorter and shorter. If you don't talk back to me, I'm going to think to myself, oh, I'm not doing a good job communicating. I'll end up repeating the same stuff over and over again. Um, so let's just get a little warm up. Say yes. yes. Come on, say it again. Yes. yes. If you come from a church where you just sit and stare, the guy probably wasn't Italian, so... Just work with me. Work with me. All of you who are watching online, uh, we're thinking about you. We respect you. You're a part of our church family, and this next round of applause is just for you. Come on, let's make it real loud. Come on. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in today. My name is Frankie Mazapika. The title of the message is Before You Pray. Before you pray. Let me just springboard straight into the verse that we're going to build the entire message off of. And if you want to follow along, uh, you can go to your app store, type in Celebration Church TW. All my sermon notes are inside of that app. Um, but I want to get straight into the scriptures. There's four verses. It's in Psalms chapter 39, verse 1. And let me just tell you this. If you're looking for a quotable quote, a takeaway from this message, it's not going to get any better than this. Uh, so I'm challenging you. Uh, this is what you want to hang on to. It's in Psalms 31, verse 1. This is how it reads. O oh Lord, you have searched my heart and you know everything about me. You know when I sit down and you know when I stand up. You know my thoughts when they are afar off. You see me when I travel and you see me when I stay home and rest. You know everything I do. And you know every word I'm going to say even before I say it. Now tell me that is not a great perspective on who God is. Come on, put your hands together for that. Come on, that's awesome. Before you pray one word, before we dive into that scripture and unpack it, before you pray one word, I want you to take a second and realize who you are talking to. Sometimes we just start praying. The words just come off our lips. We just start praying. And, and we're not taking a minute to realize who we're talking to. We're not talking to a man. The person that you see in those paintings, that's not what Jesus looks like anymore. He doesn't look like that. He looks like a God because he is God. He is one with his Father. There is no end to his presence. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 17, 
It says that he was before all things. He was before the first star was created. He was before the first animal was made. He was before the first mountain was pulled out of the ground. He was before every single galaxy. But even more astounding than that, not only was he before all things, but all things are held together within him. Every bone you have, every vein you have, every organ you have is held together within you. Every single thing that was ever made is held together within him. If you could get on a rocket ship that would never run out of gas and could fly at the speed of light and go as high as you possibly can through space, you would never get to the end of space. But space itself is within God. This is who you're talking to. And before you say one word, before you say one word, before you pray, we need to take a minute just to realize how big he is, how powerful he is, how wide he is, how high he is, and recognize that his face is facing towards you. And then we say our first word. Let's jump into the scripture, the passage. There's four verses. And that Psalms 139, 1 through 4, each of those verses are going to be my major points. Let's start with the first verse, where it reads like this. O oh Lord, you have searched my heart and you know everything about me. Everything. Do you know he knows what makes you anxious? He knows what makes you feel depressed. He knows what you get excited about. He knows what makes you just want to go to bed. He knows what makes you jump up in the morning, and he also knows what makes you want to stay in bed and take the pillow and pull it over your head. He knows every single challenge. He knows every single weakness. He knows all of your strengths. He knows all of these things and he cannot stop looking at you. In Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 and 23, it says that his love for you has no end. He loves you more than you love you. We beat ourselves up. If we treated our own thoughts like we treat people who lie to us, it would be a completely different ballgame on how we look at us. We would look at us and say, I'm not that bad. In fact, I'm cooking with grease right now. I'm getting better and better. But it's that lying thought that comes through our mind. And if, so, if we had a friend that lied to us as much as we lied to ourselves, we'd never speak to them again. But God loves you. It says that his love never ends and his mercy is endless. And every morning you wake up, they are fresh and new. His mercy is fresh every time you wake up as if you've never needed it before. Come on. But the, the last part of that verse is what I want to camp on just a little bit. Where it says this. You have searched my heart. You know everything about me. You know what I'm strong at. You know what I'm good at. You know, you know it all. Um, but he also knows where you're at, the core of your being, the part of you that you don't even tell other people. My, um, I, I've had, I've, uh, when I was trying to learn how to spell, I, 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 I did terrible. When I tried, when I was learning how to read, I, I didn't do well. Um, I distinctly remember being in the third grade. My mom would put me, we were in an apartment, a small apartment. We had this round pine table that, you know, two five-year-olds could lift up. And I would, um, I would practice my spelling words. And every single Friday, you had to take a spelling test for 20 words. And I would... My mom would work with me on the first five words. It took a while. And would, once I got those down, would go for six through ten. Then she would quiz me on 
the one through five and I'd mess up again. We'd go work on the one through five and then we'd go through the six through 10 and you see the process. After an hour at least, hour and a half, I still did not have those words down and we just got tired. Every single Friday, I would bring home my test, and it would have a big F on the test. I don't know why teachers use red pens all the time. <laughs> if you're a teacher, we use blue. Come on. It just feels better. It's softer on the eyes. Big red F. F, 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 F. And I'd come home, and I'd just hand my, my mom the teacher, uh, my, my mom the, the paper, and all of a sudden, I started making D minuses. And it was interesting because I didn't find out for several years later that my mom went marching to my school. And she told my teacher, don't you ever put an F on his paper again. Don't you ever put an F on his paper. Now, my mother's Brazilian. You poke her, you poke the bear, you get bit. You don't poke and laugh. You don't poke and say, now poke me back and that's okay. No, 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 not, not with my mom. You poke the bear, you get bit. So she shows up and she got poked. And she said, you keep on treating my son like he's an idiot by putting these Fs on his paper. From now on, you put a D minus. Now you can put an F in the grade book. I don't care how many F's you put in the grade book. I don't even care how many F's are on his report card. But if you put an F on his spelling test, I'm coming for you. <laughs> it was amazing. I was making D minuses like crazy. <laughs> I would come walking home. I, I couldn't wait to get home. <laughs> D minus, D minus, D minus, D minus. See, my mom knew, my, my teacher only saw a kid that couldn't keep his shoelaces tied. A little scrappy kid who would come back from lunch with chocolate on the corner of his lips. Always had a hole in his pants. Even if he got some new jeans, it'd have a hole in it within a week. That's all she saw. But my mom... She knew my heart. She had searched my heart. She had bore me. She knew everything about me. And even though she saw my weaknesses, ah, she would defend me to the end. And that's how the Lord looks at you. He will defend you till the end. Yes. Let me jump to the second verse, which is my second point. It says this, that the Lord knows every time you sit down and every time you stand up. He knows your thoughts when you're afar off. You know, when you, you sit down, you're kind of, <laughs> when you're standing up, you're moving, you're working, you're going forward. When you sit down, that's when you let yourself kind of exhale. That's when your mind starts wandering. You, your mind doesn't wander whenever you're busy, whenever you're working. My, gram, my grandpa used to make fake trees and sell them. Uh, you know, he worked really hard. Put these branches in there and glue all the branches. And he'd work really hard and be able to sell a plant for $42. I mean, it was the hardest $42 that you could possibly earn. And I remember standing there one day watching him and he goes, I'm working, you're not. Can you at least stand in a strain? <laughs> I didn't think that was very funny at the time because it was just reminding me. But it's just constant work. When you're working, you're, you're not, you're, your mind isn't running. But when you're sitting down on the couch, when you're sitting down at the computer, when, when you're laying down in your bed, that's when your thoughts begin to run around. Now, I'm about to be very, very transparent with you. Now, every time I am transparent, there's always somebody that has to send me some encouraging email, slip a scripture in my hand. 
I was reading this passage the other day, and you came to my mind. Okay, just listen to me. Just listen. You with me? Just listen. So I've been very open and transparent. If this is your first time in church, this is your first time hearing this, but those who call Celebration Church their church home, you're aware of this struggle that I have. Uh, I fight depression. I fight discouragement. It feels like the, the, the muscles in my face just drop. And... Um, you know, I feel like the disciples felt in Matthew chapter 19, verse 25. They had been following Jesus for years. And they look at Jesus and they're like, who in the world can be saved? <laughs> you know, these are, for some, not everyone, this is the Achilles heel. It's my Achilles heel. And so uh, I regularly go to counseling because... Um, I need someone to put a different voice in my head. A few months ago, I was in my counseling session, and I was, I was trying to express how I was feeling. But I guess I wasn't doing a good job expressing it. Uh, I don't know. And... Um, the moment passed, he's kept on talking, and so I decided I'd bring it back up and say the same thing using different words. Took it from a different angle. We weren't really connecting, so a third time, a few moments later, I brought it back up. Took it from a different angle using different words. I thought we weren't connecting. I, I, I didn't feel like he was hearing me, but Boy, was I wrong. He looked at me and he said, Frankie, very pointed. Frankie, you've said that three times. What are you so paranoid about? Now, over the years, I'm embarrassed to say that I have built armor around my heart. I'm 44 years old. I'm telling you, I'm embarrassed about this, but I built armor around my heart so that I can't get hurt. And on any other day, that would have ricocheted off my heart. I would have been fine. But this wasn't any other day. And those words found a crack in my armor and it pierced. Like a nine-year-old, I started chewing my lip. I looked out the window because I could feel my eyes welling up with tears and I didn't want them to know. But if I kept looking out the window, I knew that he would realize that something was wrong. And so when I looked at him, I would look over his shoulder. And then finally, I made the biggest mistake. I blinked. And man, my top, the top lid of my eye pushed all the tears like right out and out of both corners. I tried to wipe them away real fast and then it was like, I can't, can't keep up. And then he looked at me and he said, Frankie, what are you feeling? I did not know what I was feeling. I knew I felt hurt. I knew I was overwhelmed with emotion, but I didn't know what I was feeling. I'm still chewing my lip. I don't want to talk because my voice is going to crack. And then I looked at him and then I said these words. 
I'm doing the best I can. The rest of the session, I think shortly after that, my 45 minutes was up. But I'll never forget that particular session. And now my mind goes back to that verse. You know when I sit down. You know when I stand up. And when your thoughts are afar off, you can't explain it. But I know. Here's the third verse. You see me when I travel. Or when I stay at home at rest. You know everything that I do. When I say he knows everything you do. There's this natural flesh indication where you think to yourself, oh my goodness, <laughs> he knows everything I do. Oh my goodness, this is terrible. I hope he has a short memory. <laughs> this is terrible. He knows what I say. He knows what I do when, I th when I'm alone. He Quiet that down. Those are condemning thoughts. Shh. When I say he knows everything you do, God knows every little win. And it makes him smile. The king of the universe. Every little win. Last summer, my grandmother died. She lived in Miami. I went to the funeral. Afterwards, I went to this restaurant on Miami Beach with my cousin who lives in Miami. We were sitting on a patio, uh, out on the patio of the restaurant at this table. And one chair was facing the beach. The other chair was facing the inside of the restaurant. Now, I live in Houston. Galveston is the only ocean that's near us. And if you live here, you know that is not a beach. <laughs> we don't know what it is. We've been trying to figure it out for a long time. But it looks nothing like Miami Beach. So I wanted to sit in the good chair. I'm Italian. I'm half Brazilian, half Italian. My back's supposed to be to the wall anyway. I don't trust anybody in a restaurant. Somebody's going to come in, shoot, shoot somebody, drop the gun, pick up the cannoli. I want to be, I want to know what's going on. But that wasn't the good seat. I, I wanted my back to the wall, and I wanted to see the ocean. My cousin looked at me and goes, what seat do you want? Now, it's very obvious what seat is the best seat. And I'm thinking to myself, you live here. You live here. Why are you asking me what seat I want? And so clearly he wanted that seat too. And so I said, ah, you sit there, I'll sit here. It was a little, small, unselfish win. I know everything you do. I saw it. The last point that I want to talk about is when the Bible says, I know every word you're going to say even before you say it. Now, 
Some of you are in a really hard season right now. I remember a few months ago in the season that I was talking to you about, just a few months ago, I thought to myself, I am in a hard season. And this thought came to my mind. This is not hard. I know what hard is. I know what hard is. And this is not hard. Some of you that are in a hard season, come on. Come on. Let's be honest. You know what hard is. This is not hard. Those seasons that almost killed you? No, that was hard. This? This isn't hard. And the Lord knows what you are going to say. Maybe you said it yesterday. Maybe you're going to say it today. Maybe you're going to say it tomorrow. But eventually he knows what you are going to say. You are going to say... The same thing that you have been saying your entire life. And if you're new to Christianity, you've already said this many times. He knows you're going to say it even before you say it. A nanosecond before you say it, a day before you say it. But he knows eventually, he knows what you are going to say. And this is what you're going to say. I need you. I need you. And the Lord is going to look at you and he'll say, and that's why I love you. Did this message help anyone today? Come on. Did it help you? Every single Sunday, I always share a video. A video of Someone who got healed. If you're new here, typically, I'm not sure if I'll do this, but uh, this is typically what happens. I go and sit on the front row, watch the video just like you. I ask the Lord if there's anyone he wants me to pray for. And I'll have a few thoughts. And I never know if it's me talking to me or if it's God talking to me. But if I'm at least 70% sure, I mention it. Because if I'm talking to myself, unfortunately, I wasted your time. And I'm sorry for that. But if I've heard from God, there will be a miracle. That person will get healed. In the first service, I had three words of knowledge. I felt like the Lord told me three things, three particular conditions. Two of the three were inaccurate. Nobody raised their hand. I had to own that. I'm sorry. I thought the Lord was talking to me. Obviously, he wasn't. But the third one was accurate. And every single person, all five people, were healed. One, two, three, four, five. Now you may say, maybe you didn't miss it. Maybe they just didn't want to raise their hand. I don't know what happens to those people. I can tell you we... We don't ever get testimonies emailed to us that I knew you were talking to me and I didn't want to come down, so I walked out. We never get testimonies about that. When someone, when when I am scared to share what I think the Lord has told me, which I am every time, 
but yet I do it scared. And when the person out there is nervous to raise their hand, but they raise their hand nervous, that's enough for a miracle to happen. This is what took place with this testimony. Take a look at this. This morning, woke up about 5.30 a.m., did my errands, and uh, I had this ache and pain on the whole right side of my face. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, touch it because it hurt so bad. Um, and my, my right ear was just throbbing and, and aching. Um, it was a sensation that I never experienced before. Um, we usually come to 9 a.m. service, and I came to the 11 o'clock service. Uh, and during worship, uh, my, my ears were in pain. Uh, the music sounded muffled. It was just not right, but I was still praising and worship, worshiping. Um, and then Pastor Frankie called prayer partners to come up to the front. And uh, I went up to the front, said he had uh, a word for someone with right ear. I didn't let him finish. I jumped out of that spot where I was at and I hopped up in the front and I said, Lord, this is for me. I felt this warmth from, from the bottom of my feet coming up and all I just was just saying, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, because I know this is for me. And I put my right hand against my right ear and I was just saying, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And as Pastor Frankie came up to me, he said, what are you up here for again? <laughs> and I said, my right ear. I said, I couldn't, I couldn't touch my face. It hurt. I didn't put makeup on this morning, Pastor Frankie, because it hurt. I said, but I could touch it. I said, and my ears popping like air bubbles. I don't know. It's popping. And I just started shaking. And he said, sweetheart, God is healing you right now. I don't need to pray for you. God is healing you. And I just give God, God the glory because I don't know what came over me this morning. I don't know if Satan was saying, no, Alicia, you're not going to church today. You know, I'm going to prevent you from going to church. But if it wasn't for my 14 year old to say, mom, I need praise and worship. I probably would still be at home. So thank you, God. Let's keep clapping and stand to our feet. Give the Lord a standing ovation. Let's give him our best too. Come on. Let's give him our best. Let me, let me just be scared and nervous and a, little in, a lot insecure. <laughs> See, whenever you're going to allow the Lord to use you, if you're not nervous, um, you need to stretch yourself a little bit more. The greatest things you'll find are outside your comfort zone. The greatest miracles the Lord will use you with are outside your comfort zone. I'm going to try to get as specific as I can. And these are so far out there that If I miss it, I'll know why, because it's a very narrow, it's a narrow net. Is there anyone here who's been getting nosebleeds? It's the first category. The second category is you're having ringing in your left ear. Now, if it's in your right, I still believe you'll get healed, but you're not the person I need to pray for. You're getting nosebleeds, ringing in your left ear. And there was a third impression I got. I don't remember what it was. 
But if that's you, I want you to just come out of your seat right now. Just raise your hand, come out of your seat. I'm not going to embarrass you. You're just going to stand on the front row. When service is over, I'm going to pray for you. That's it. Why'd you come down? You've been getting nosebleeds. Is there anyone else? Why'd you, is you having ringing in your left ear? Ringing in your left ear. I'll tell you, that is tormenting. I read an article about, well, never mind. It's tormenting. Anyone else? Ringing in your left ear. Is there anyone else? Every Sunday you come here. Let me just say, sometimes I, ha I, I have a different plan. I, I end up doing something different. Nine out of ten Sundays, you'll see a video of someone getting healed. It's been happening for the last four years. If if you want to get on our YouTube channel and just fast forward right to the end, you'll see a healing video. These are the four people I'm supposed to pray for. But there's people in this room right now that you have another area that needs healing. It's your body. You're being tormented with your thoughts and mind your heart, you've been hurt. Whatever it is, in a moment, the prayer partner is going to come down and I want you to come onto your seat, pray with the prayer partner. In fact, with those prayer partners, go ahead and come out right now and just line up down here. I'm telling you, more testimonies come from the prayer partners than when I pray for them. Why'd you come down, sweetie? Yeah. Left ear? Is it your left ear? It's both. If you're in this room and you're not sure where you would spend eternity if your heart were to stop beating in the next five minutes, you're the most important person in this room because you don't know when your heart is going to stop beating. There are people all over the world whose heart stopped beating yesterday and they're your age. You never know. If you're not sure where you'd spend eternity, I want you to come out of your seat and I want you to pray with a person down here. The Bible says if you're ashamed of him, front of the Father, he'll be ashamed of you. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. If you're ashamed of him in front of people, he'll be ashamed of you in front of the Father. So whether you come out of your seat or you don't, let's just worship together through this song just one or two times before you leave. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May his face shine down upon you and be gracious to you. May his countenance be lifted up on you and bring you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus.